So I am from South Korea. Just for those uh, who are not so familiar with uh, my company, SK Telecom, we are the, the leading operator, tier one operator in Korea, both uh, fixed uh, and uh, mobile combined, occupying approximately 50% market share. And we are also one of the three IPTV service providers. And now we are pursuing and moving forward to the next uh, era, which is uh, 5G. So even if the 5G first global spec specification is uh, still under development and expected to be done by the end of hopefully this year, and then the major rollout, worldwide rollout, probably will start to begin like uh, year 2020 or later on. But you know, this year, 2017, it seems to be a very important milestone as far as the 5G um, community, operator community concerns because you will see, you will see the real uh, trial services sometime this year, and here and there, here in America and in Korea, you know. So this is a major uh, milestone, and we are very much excited. Uh, but knowing that the ecosystem is not fully ready yet. We have to fully understand what risks, what risks we are dealing with. So, so today I'm gonna use my presentation to explain you about our thoughts about what paradigm shift uh, we try to institute during the course of a 5G network uh, rollout. So, starting from this slice, I presume that the, these are the key initiatives we are uh, pursuing. Uh, but most of you are already familiar with all these uh, you know, keywords. So unbundling, open source, softwareization, and cloudification. Those are the four major initiatives that we try to you know, implement, embrace. Because this is a perfect opportunity for us to change our uh, network architectures and do things uh, right this time, right? So open source, you know, you know what that means. Softwareization, cloudification, very straightforward. Unbundling is very tricky things, you know. Uh, a lot of unbundling or democratization is already done on the data center side. They, you know, open source community has an excellent job, including hardware and software, democratizing the Know, conventional data center and transform it to a very uh, you know, flexible and agile programmable and uh, operation efficient uh, cloud uh, systems. And the open source community, I mean, it, 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 you, you really must be very proud of it. You are the one who actually make that happen. But can you expect the same unbundling, democratization on the opposite side, which is uh, radio access network side? which actually the major portion of operator TCO, total cost of ownerships. Because, uh, you know, when you speak, when you talk about ready access unit, you have to deal with many, many operation problems, including cell site acquisition and installing the equipment, antennas, and do the calibrations, and also you have to regularly uh, dispatch your engineers, making sure everything is operating uh, well. So that makes things are very difficult for operators to, you know, to, to aggressively uh, go for the you know, access network unbundling. But it's time to, to make it happen. So we SK Telecom, together with the other operator friends, we started the unbundling, many unbundling projects here and there. And uh, open source technology is also it's going to be a very crucial ingredient uh, doing so. But what makes uh, unbundling difficult than other, area, other domain is uh, because the specification is not being developed here. It's being developed by other community, which is uh, 3GPP, a very semi-open community. But anyway, it's, uh, it, and also the specification is very heavy, and you have to make sure you have support you know, backward compatibility, forward compatibility, and also the existing network equipment uh, vendors, uh, they are trying very hard, change, try to change themselves, and try to be, become more 
IT centric uh, vendors, but then still uh, there's a lot of, not just the technical challenges, but also culture challenges and uh, operation challenges. So I'm gonna address that uh, later on. And uh, so we came up, SK Teleco, we came up with the two important architectures, namely the S scale and cost, Cosmos. So on the right hand side, bottom, you see you know, S scale and Cosmos. So S scale, it's a overlay network architectures, whereas the Cosmos is an underlay, you know, cloudified, softwareized, you know, softwareized uh, uh, platform architectures. I'll talk about that. The, so here's the overall picture of uh, what I described, what I mentioned, uh, S scale and Cosmos. Um, so as you know, if you're a key um, operating executive, what concern you have you know, when it comes to uh, you know, may, making a decision on the big investments like a 5G? One is you want to achieve agile new service introductions, new service introductions. So that's one important agenda. The second is a significant TCO efficiency and savings. Like I said, access network comprise most part of a whole TCO. So you have to you have to you, you have to you know be very cautious on that. And and last but not least is the consumer experience quality or satisfaction. So those are the three priorities on top of my, you know, in, in their mind, the executive mind. So how our SKT's architectures, you know, S scale and Cosmos combined can, can deliver uh, that, uh, that uh, achieve that targets. So S scale, like I said, is a uh, overlay architectures. Uh, it comprises next generation OSS, uh, which is a big, uh, big data, uh, data analytics based, and, uh, and networking slicing, and software defined RAN, SD RAN, and uh, software defined uh, core. Software defined core is uh, relatively straightforward because uh, thanks to the SDN and NFB technology, whereas software defined RAN is very, uh, I'd like to say, tricky because it's, uh, it's not especially the front hall side, back hall side, still a lot of, um, you know, closed architectures. It's, it's supposed to be open architecture, but in reality, it's, uh, it's not that open yet. So we need to democratize all these uh, interfaces uh, between the different building blocks, horizontally and vertically. And, you know, control plane, user plane. I, you know, personally, I'd, I'd like to introduce a new plane called the radio plane, which is uh, less addressed uh, during the whole um, summit here this week. So, um, and the Cosmos is our software defined interest infrastructure. It's not just uh, open source hardware, but also it's a software defined infrastructure based on open hardware and softwares. So this is a more detailed uh, diagram. So, and let me skip this, but I'd like to emphasize the importance of uh, in 5G how we 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 how we should uh, do the function splitting between the access net. I mean the centralized access unit and the remote unit. So remote unit up until 4G or its evolution. So we only have uh, just a RF component there and use the very expensive fiber-based uh, front hall. Uh, to transmit, uh, receive, the, and digitize the RF signals to the data processing unit. And there is a high um, performance constraint on the fr put on the front hall today. So, uh, so it's uh, going to be important. Uh, in 5G, we have to loosen up all those uh, performance constraints so that we can replace it uh, with uh, the commodity uh, front hall, such as uh, carrier Ethernet. So, and then to achieve that, you have to be very, you know, you have to be very smart. Uh, 
uh, splitting the uh, functionalities uh, for the basement processing. So you have to move some portion of L1 processing to the radio remote unit side and then leave some functionalities on that uh, data processing side. But you want to centralize data, data uh, you know, uh, digital units, uh, to the, you, you want to centralize it to the extent possible, right? Uh, so that part is very tricky. So, and uh, what else? So, I mean, you know, in the conventional cloud architectures, uh, there are three resources you are dealing with, right? The compute and storage and network. But you forgot to incorporate the radio as a, you know, resources, one of the resources you have managed. Because of that, your cloud architectures cannot penetrate into the access network today. So you have to introduce this radio resource um, as a part of your you know, resource pooling mechanisms. So otherwise, uh, you, know, you cannot properly address the, the uh, access, access, radio access uh, domain. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to emphasize that uh, the significance of uh, those things. So, to, because the radio is the most precious uh, asset and resources from mobile operator perspective. First, it's very expensive to acquire. Second, it may get even more expensive. And third is uh, the more spectrum you have, the more front hole, back hole networks you need, but that requires a huge TCO increasement. So overall, you know, more spectrum means more TCOs. So how you can deal with, uh, you know, this kind of a uh, undesirable uh, TCO increase? So if you do things right, and if you properly embrace the radio resource as part of your, uh, you know, cloud resource management uh, framework then you can do a much better job and uh, there won't be any customizations. Today, so, you know, to embrace the cloud, you know, all the innovations done in data center can be applied to the ready access unit, but it requires a lot of customizations because uh, there is no res radio resource management scheme there. So, and SK, you know, this slide is very busy. It's pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, but this week, you know, I uh, recognize that uh, this radio side is uh, less addressed than any other topics. So, uh, once again, I'd like to, you know, underline the importance of the addressing this uh, space. Because this is the where you can uh, find the uh, huge business opportunities and also technology innovations and also more healthful, healthy ecosystem cultivations. So our ready access network, software defined ready access network uh, initiative comprises uh, five uh, projects. Uh, open front hall, like I said, and modular uh, ready, uh, remote access unit and uh, control plane user plane separation uh, through a standard interface. XREN, there is an activity called the XREN. They've done a good job uh, to make uh, this, this, uh, this happen. And they introduced uh, kind of a notion of a RAN server, which is a very good. And the third is uh, open hardware software. Uh, I mean, the white box bare metal, uh, OCP compliant hardware is, uh, is it's a very appropriate but still, there are lack of uh, certain uh, requirements that op mobile operator uh, need, you know. So like, uh, you know, 6.9 reliability or something like that. So, uh, so still, there's uh, some areas that needs to be further uh, improved in order, you know, op mobile operator to truly, uh, you know, more aggressively adopt the open hardware software. And uh, mobile edge computing, you know, Someone also introduced the, the mobile edge computing. Uh, it's, a, it's not a mobile edge computing, it's a multiple access edge computing, meaning that you can, uh, you know, multiple, ac multiple access edge computing can embrace not just the mobile, but also 
fixed line, any media broadcasting uh, line, uh, you know, broadcasting network. So it's a, the concept is being uh, broadened today. And uh, but last, last but not least is uh, analytics based, the self-organizing network. This is the uh, area, uh, this is the domain that your machine learning technology can be fully exploited. And uh, life cycle management, end to end slicing, it's too, com too busy slice, so let me skip it. And Cosmos is an uh, underlay, uh, uh, you know, architectures that I mean, just mentioned. So it looks like a conventional um, cloud architectures, but we, in, uh, we have done some customizations uh, to, 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 to use this, uh, to cloud the conventional architectures for the mobile network. So, and uh, open source, we, in, we have been taking advantage of all this, a uh, you know, variety of uh, open source uh, solutions. And uh, I'm going to spend a few minutes, you know, SK Telecom's uh, activities in the, in the space of open source community. So we are participating in many, many um, different uh, open source community, uh, including ONOS, CORD, OCP, TIP, which happen, you know, that I'm currently uh, sharing the board, uh, and the OpenStack, and the OPN FOB and uh, XRAN, um, maybe ONAP too. <laughs> I haven't decided yet, but uh, it looks quite promising to me. So I'm not. A, so this is MCord. Uh, we, um, together with our operator and uh, very, um, you know, ben, uh, vendor or innovators uh, support, uh, we are able to successfully showcase this. Uh, at the Mobile World Congress, uh, March this year, and we, um, I, I strongly believe that we gain a lot of tractions, and uh, it uh, proves that uh, this kind of, a, you know, new architecture, open source based, uh, uh, you know, ready access, you know, mobile network uh, works well, not just functionally but also operation wise, and we are very proud of being. Uh, part of the, this uh, pioneering uh, companies. And uh, there were some real business cases and use cases. So this is very important uh, to uh, when you talk to your, your, your supervisors because, it, 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 because uh, 5G really, will uh, require a huge investment, CapEx and OPEX. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very important you have to come up with uh, some compelling stories. And also, you have to, you know, with this kind of uh, understanding about uh, what business opportunities uh, you can achieve out of uh, 5G, you can feel more comfortable as an engineer. So you can do your job better, right? Once you feel more confident. And uh, we are also actively participating in uh, some other uh, open source project as well, Kubernetes and SAP, especially the Kubernetes. This, as Kubernetes side, uh, we decided to use it for our, you know, um, cloud systems, uh, and also SAP uh, is uh, our uh, flash storage, uh, software-defined storage solutions. Previously, it's uh, cost, it's uh, optimized for the hard disk. Now we are trying to donate our code so that it can much more optimized for the, you know, more uh, new storage uh, systems, which is a uh, uh, flash based and tip like I said I'm currently chairing these activities I'm very uh, proud of it and uh, you know we have a very good uh, partner of op uh, uh, colleague operators like a Deutsche Telekom and uh, and also you know a lot of operators other operators start to join it including Telefonica Orange Vodafone and BT and uh, some others so it's uh, it's organically growing, and also um, functionally, it's also growing as well. So there is uh, many new project group today, and as you can see on this chart, the left, uh, the the right hand side uh, means uh, the access network, and the uh, left hand side 
uh, sorry, left hand side is access network on the, from your side. And right hand side is, uh, is a core network. And in the middle, it's a backhaul. So as you see, we have uh, many more um, uh, project group on the access side, meaning that uh, we are truly uh, focusing on the access network uh, democratizations and unbundling and uh, embracing the open source hardware and software. So we are very excited about it. Uh, this, you know, every year we are holding a you know, TIP summit. So you, you would be welcome if you, you know, join us. And like I said, the 4G bundling project is uh, one of the focusing areas uh, we, we, we are doing in uh, TIP. So here, uh, explaining the, how we can split the functions between the different uh, uh, units and also how we can split and make it open interface uh, and, uh, horizontally and, and vertically. There are some you know, alternative architecture choices here, you know, type one and type two. So depending on what uh, your network rollout strategy and vendor partners, uh, you can adopt uh, different uh, alternatives, different types. And uh, we um, put together, uh, so it's not just a paper technology or concept technology, we actually built a prototype and POC and, uh, and successfully demonstrated. And uh, you know, we have a very, um, very important technology companies in these uh, in this, uh, pictures, such as Redis's. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, this is uh, pretty much about it. Like I said, I'd like to re-emphasize the importance of uh, what matters for the op mobile operators. One is a TCO innovations. So with 5G, can you achieve that? My answer is yes, because uh, it, 5G architecture will be much more simplified, right? So LTE and all the way up to the today's uh, mobile network is pretty complicated. You know, it was a streamline when we introduced the LTE, but still the complexity is there. So we have to further or significantly streamline the mobile network you know, in 5G era, and uh, we are working on it uh, collectively. Uh, and secondly is uh, new service introductions. Should be agile, agile. So we built a transform our uh, service network, service infrastructure, uh, become to become uh, agile, programmable, and uh, reliable. So DevOps environment perfectly fit into these uh, strategies. And last but not least is uh, end user or customer experience. How you can satisfy, how you can surprise, how you can, you know, impress your customer, how it, so that you can acquire new customer and also keep retain your existing customers. So we, to to achieve all these three goals. You know, 5G um, network principle has to be designed properly uh, to, 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 to embrace all this technology innovations being uh, happening uh, in, in, in this community. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Do we have questions or does everybody want to go home? You're not going to be popular, though. <laughs> as long as everybody gets more knowledgeable, I'm OK. Good answer. Yeah. You get a discount next year. Sure. OK, Raghu from Siena. Um, when we listen to the enterprise presentation from Amadeus, um, some of the drivers included the enormous uh, number of changes that they have to handle per day, per month, and the number of transactions that they have to handle as a basis for going down the software-defined networking approach. From a telco operator, mobile operator perspective, um, what is the scale of changes that you have at this point in time that you could not achieve and we would like to achieve, for example, 
And the second aspect is when you are trying to think of new service introduction, um, what kind of time scales do you anticipate needing as you look into the future of the VR, AR kind of services? So how responsive should the network be going forward? Yeah, okay. So my answer to your first question, scalability matters uh, a lot to the operators for many reasons. One, the traffic demand is growing exponentially. You know, average data consumption per month, per you know, user last year, you know, LTE, uh, it's like a 2, 2.5 or 3 gigabyte per month per users. Now, this year, one year later, it's already doubled. And the growth rate is increasing rapidly. So you, you have to make sure that your network capacity and cell capacity has to be scalable, right? So scale, scalability matters a lot. And to make your access networks as scalable as possible, we have to embrace the, this kind of a, you know, softwareization and cloudification. I mean, you can reproduce your precious uh, radio resources by densifying your cell site, but like I said, it also associated many, you know, cost, acquisition cost and site management cost. So, yeah, so that's, you know, that's, that's what matters. Things very difficult for the scalability, to, to, to guarantee the scalability. But anyway, you know, we, have a, we feel very confident that uh, so far s s we, we managed to uh, accommodate all this uh, rapidly increasing traffic demand, mainly in the space of mobile media. And uh, from subscriber perspective, you may say, you, you know, in a saturated market, there is no subscription increasement which is not true because uh, IoT, connected car, there are many things still need new connectivity. So if you count them, again, the number of subscribers will increase uh, significantly. So these are the, our scalability requirements. And to answer your next second question, how fast uh, should we um, expect the, the new in service introduction? Uh, I mean, theoretically or ultimately, it should be a real time on demand, and uh, you know, just like uh, to compete against the, like uh, what they are providing, the, what OTT providing, we had to, our speed has to be compatible. So that's our target. Right, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.